Today we're going to be taking a look at the Mextile Core 3588E. This is a new system on a module based on the Rockchip RK3588. It's got the same 69.6x45mm 45 form factor as the NVIDIA Jetson TX2 NX module and uses the same 260 pin edge connector. So it's compatible with many of the same carrier boards. In the center of the module we've got the Rockchip RK3588 processor. This is an 8 core 64 bit chip that consists of a 4 core Cortex A76 processor running at 2.4 GHz and a 4 core Cortex A55 processor running at 1.8 GHz. In addition to this, it's got an ARM Mali G610 GPU. Alongside it is the EMMC storage module, and on the other side of the CPU are the LPDDR4 RAM chips. The Core 3588E comes in three configurations. One with 4 gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of storage, selling for $132. One with 16 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage, selling for $190. And lastly, one with 32 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage, selling for $329. This is quite pricey for a module with this processor on it, but it is fairly close to the pricing on the Turing RK1 modules with the same SoC. So let's see how it performs. On the bottom is the 260 pin SODIUM connector. This allows it to be plugged into devices and carrier boards. The carrier board that you use will obviously determine which ports and interfaces are available, but the 3588E supports HDMI and DisplayPort interfaces up to 8K60, as well as USB 3, USB 2, PCI Express 3.0 and 2.1, and a range of I.O. interfaces like UART, SPI, I2C, CAN, I2S, PWM and digital I.O. pins. The carrier board that I'm going to be using with the Core 3588E is the A206, which is designed for NVIDIA Jetson modules. The main I.O. is all brought out to one side, with a power input on the left which supports 9 to 19 volts DC. Alongside that we've got a display port and an HDMI port, then four USB 3.0 ports and a gigabit ethernet port. The micro USB port is for reflashing the bootloader. It's also got a set of GPIO pins along the side, and then a set of pins at the back for buttons and the CAN interface, as well as two camera inputs. On the bottom is an M.2 E key port and an M.2 M key port as well as a real-time clock battery holder and a micro SD card slot. Also available for the Core 3588E is an optional heatsink. This has a built-in PWM fan on it which plugs into the carrier board. The board comes preloaded with a custom Ubuntu image, so it's ready to run right out of the box. You can also compile your own images for Debian and Android. I'm going to test this board in a similar way to other SBCs that I've tried on this channel, but I'll also show you at running a pre-trained AR model to recognize objects in images, as this is primarily what these modules are intended to be used for. If we open up HTOP, we can see that we have 8 processor cores, which currently aren't doing much, and then we've got our 16 gigs of RAM. First let's try playing back a YouTube video in Chromium, which I'm going to do at 1080p. We can open up Chromium, go to YouTube, and then open up Big Buck Bunny. I'll open up Stats for Nerds and set the playback resolution to 1080p as well. Video playback in the window is pretty good. We dropped a few frames in the beginning, but after that playback settles and is very usable. It's also pretty good running at full screen, again dropping a few frames in the beginning and then settling down. If we open up HTOP, we can see that we're averaging less than 30% utilization on the first four cores. This is relatively low compared to the other 3588 boards I've tested. The optional heatsink and fan do a really good job at keeping the Core 3588E cool. After 20 minutes of 1080p video playback on YouTube, the CPU was only at 47 degrees and the heatsink was at 38 degrees. Next let's do a CPU performance comparison with the Mixtile Blade 3, the Rock 5B and the Orange Power 5 Plus, 
which all run the same RK3588 SOC. We'll do this by running the sysbench CPU benchmark. After 10 seconds, we've processed a little under 5,400 events per second, and we get a total score of 54,089. Over three tests, we get an average score of 54,083. For comparison, also over three consecutive tests, the Mixtile Blade 3 managed an average of 54,025. The Rock 5B managed an average of 53,642, and the Orange Pi 5 Plus managed an average of 53,436. So this is slightly higher than the other boards I've tested, but it's not a significant improvement, and it's probably because we're running a different OS, as this is Ubuntu and all the others were tested on Debian. Next we'll try James Chambers' Pi Benchmark script. We're going to use this to test the speed of the onboard eMMC storage. This benchmark favours better random read-write performance, as this is a good representation of how the storage or drive would typically be used as an OS drive rather than just reading and writing a single large file to it. On completion, we get a score of 9822. This isn't great. Sequential read speeds are around 264 megabytes per second, and writes are around 225 megabytes per second, with random reads and writes being 13 times and 5 times slower respectively. A better option would be to boot from an NVMe drive on the carrier board, but the eMMC storage is okay for an onboard solution if you aren't transferring large amounts of data. Next we'll try running an AR object detection model. This is a pre-trained model that you send an image to, and it then analyzes the image to see if any objects that has been trained to identify are present. I'll put a link to the model's documentation in the video description if you'd like to see a list of all the objects that it can detect. I've got five test images prepared. We'll put each of these through the model and it'll produce an output image which shows any detected objects and its confidence in the classifications. Image 1 is a photograph of three elephants. The image took 18 milliseconds to process and this is the result. So it got all three correct with a fairly high confidence. Image 2 is a woman in front of a pedestrian crossing with some traffic in the background. This too took 18 milliseconds to process, and the results are also pretty good. There's a lot going on in the background, but the main elements in the foreground and the center are all correct. Image 3 is a similar traffic image. This has got most of the main elements correct, and even a number of partially obscured cars are correctly identified. Image 4 is a basket of vegetables with some oranges in front of them. It made a few mistakes with this image. I'm not even really sure why, these look nothing like an apple or carrot, although the confidence levels are pretty low, so it clearly had trouble working through these areas. The last image is of a dinner table. Again, this image is mostly correct, even recognizing that the whole image is of a dinner table but the knives on either side have been missed and have jointly been labelled as a spoon with the spoons next to them. The fork on the far side it's got right despite the low confidence. Lastly, let's take a look at power consumption. To measure the Core 3588E's power consumption, I use the mains power meter. This indicates that the Core 3588 uses about 4 watts when idle, and this goes up to 9 watts when loaded. This is a bit higher than the Blade 3, but also does have an active cooler on it and a few extra circuits on the carrier board as well. Overall I think, similar to the Blade 3, the Core 3588E is quite expensive, especially considering it's a bare module and you'll still need to add a carrier board or have a device to plug it into to use it. They have again used good quality components and the module is similarly priced to some alternatives like the Turing RK1 modules. With the RK3588 SoC, performance is great, especially considering its low power consumption. This module is ideal for applications like live object detection or motion tracking on a video feed. Let me know what you think of the Mixtile Core 3588E in the comment section below, and if there's anything else you'd like to see me try on it. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe for more tech in electronics, projects, tutorials, and reviews.